correctly set. Um, and when you open binary, it's going to look really similar to this, except for the green light won't be there. Uh, I'm going to leave that on because that actually activates the sequence, and I want my sequence to be active. So my transport is already running and live, and uh, let me explain a little bit about what binary is. Uh, binary is a 32-bank sequencer, and it's a binary sequencer, so it deals with one step at a time, or one note at a time, rather. You can set the note and the octave um, in the GUI, or I can also hit this bottom button, and these eight dials at the bottom will control the parameters um, for the selected plugin or the selected sequence, rather. I can select the sequence just by pressing the button. And you'll know which sequence is selected because it will have a uh, white LED lit underneath of it. Um, in order to program a sequence, you use the buttons at the bottom of the controller. And they represent on and off states. So uh, there's nothing in the sequence right now. It's not playing. In order to add some steps, I just press some buttons. And suddenly, you'll see that I have some lights moving along the top here. And I can speed the sequence up or slow it down just by turning the dial. I can add some more notes. Speed it up further. If it's not moving fast as, uh, as fast as I'd like, then I can use the third button on the left there It'll start flashing and let you know that you're in course adjustment mode. So now I can change the timing much faster. And that's pretty much how binary works. Um, I can lock the tempo of the sequence to live's uh, quantization, or well, it'll be quantized to live's clock by using the second button. And any selected sequence that has a locked uh, clock will flash. If it's not locked, then it'll be a solid light. I can add another sequence. Let's see. Uh, these bottom controls, I want to see what channel I'm on because I'm going to transmit with this one on the same channel. And the GUI and the plugin will update um, as soon as I select a new sequence. So I'm transmitting right now on channel 4. I want to do the same with this sequence. And then I'm going to add some notes. And I'm going to activate it. Oops, I think I might be on channel 5. There we are. I can change the root note here. And the actual note there. If I want to uh, lock the timing of the second sequence to the first one, then if I hold down the button for the second sequence and press the first one, it will lock. I can change the direction that the sequence is moving. Um, basically, you have three choices. It's either going up or in reverse, or it's going to bounce. It's going to go up and then down. And I can change the length of the sequence very easily um, just by turning this guy. It only shows 13 steps at a time, but they always come back around. So you get the idea. Um, so there's some other controls that I can get to using the shift button. Um, and right now I'm on page one, now I'm on page two, page three. But a lot of these are more concerned with uh, the grid controller. Um, I, I got to the point with binary where I realized I wanted it to be more than just a binary sequencer. So um, binary on a grid controller, I guess, would be octal because... Uh, it's gained the ability to transmit eight notes at a time. And I'm going to go to Octal by the same method I showed you above. I'm going to go to my second bank by pressing that button and then go to plug-in nine. And right now I have the second one selected, so I'm looking at the second sequence. And the running light there is showing uh, what the position is. I mean, I can add steps by just grabbing them here. I'm going to go to the second page, and the second page represents my length. So if I want to change the length back to 16, for instance, I just do that. 
um, the third page, and I'm getting to the pages here because I have the key lock enabled. Um, I could also hold down shift, and then this bottom row becomes my keys. Um, so I'm going to go to page three, and a little bug I've found. Um, now the running lights are, again, showing me what position I'm in. Um, and I can stay in the position I'm at just by holding down that button, and then I can add some more notes. This first row of notes is always lit. I can turn them off, but whenever you initialize a sequence, it's always going to have uh, the first row lit. So you get the idea. Um, the fourth page is going to be my velocities. And I can randomly change velocities however I like. The fifth page shows what sequences are active. So if I hit one there, you notice the green light goes off up there. Um, and the button right, the sixth button, or the sixth key rather, right after the page buttons, the first five, um, that's going to change the, the um, the binary script over to play mode. And in play mode, basically, it's uh, press and release. If I have it held down, then the sequence will play. And if I lift up, it's not going to play. The same thing happens here. Um, the sixth button is the select, it allows you to select which sequence you're on from the grid. And the seventh button, or the eighth button, is. Uh, that's the lock button. So that will quantize whatever the sequence is to the current timing, whatever it's closest to. Um, so if you change it in unlocked mode and then turn the quantization on, it's automatically going to lock whatever the closest quantization amount is according to live's time clock. Um, and it will also change the color of the select. So uh, on the grid, it's a red and magenta on the old uh, RGB anyway. And it changes as soon as I turn it off. So that pretty much is binary. Um, now, the cool thing about binary is you can do a whole bunch of other stuff with it. Right now, I'm sending out uh, to individual channels, and I'm sending them to MIDI instruments. But I can also use binary as a timing engine for all my other monomodular plugins. And the way the new monomodular plugins are set up, you can use any monomodular plugin to send timing to any other monomodular plugin uh, that has its own internal clock. And you do that by going to the MIDI screen or the MIDI settings on each one of the plugins. Um, there should be one on all the plugins that had internal engines before. And if I hit MIDI, you'll see that this version of Gome has uh, the timing source assigned to external and the beat to C minus 2, which is note 0, and the start to C sharp minus 2, which is note 1. Um, my input source is set to LH MIDI. And pretty much everything in this project is, I, I use LH MIDI because it's easy to send stuff out, the IEC bus, and have it bounce back so that you can route it freely within live. Um, that's why this channel strip is here, so that I can quickly change uh, what the destination of my, my monomodular plugin is. Um, I'll tell you more about that later. But uh, the pertinent bit of information here is that I can go up here to this sequence and I can change its channel to 16 and change its note to 0 and its octave to 0 and then I can go to my Polygome plugin and make sure I'm on channel 16 I have timing set to external and if I go over to my Polygome plugin on the grid controller, well, we're going to turn off the external source. So I already have a sequence running. I'm going to turn hold off, and you see it's linked to the internal timing engine. OK, so now let's turn timing back to external, and let's arm this 
uh, or activate that first sequence, which we just set up. And now wait. Every time one of these notes passes by, it's triggering an event in Polygome. So I can change the timing of Polygome by changing the timing of the sequence that I have assigned as its timing source. It means you can do some crazy stuff uh, with uh, <coughs> uh, basically customized swing and uh, beat mapping. Um, and you can also assign multiple sequences on the binary plugin to send to the same plugin and get some really crazy timing stuff going on. Like for instance, we can go over here and we can assign this one also to note zero and octave zero and turn up my channel to 16 and activate it. It's still going by the, uh, the sequence that's programmed, programmed in a polygome, but it's no longer linked to the internal engine. It's running off of these two plugins, or these two sequences. So that's what I've done with binary. 